that year for Ragesville. As we wrote the foe, strong and fearless. Jack, and you better hurry if you want hot wheat cakes. Coming, honey. Stand up and cheer for Ridgeville as we rock the boat. Strong and fearless, proud and fearless, go, go, go. Stand up and shout for Ridgeville. Hey, Warren and Luke. We are here for you. We are here for Ridgeville. One, two, up Jack, and do it. will you hurry, please? Be right down in a minute, hon. Keep those weak cakes hot. One, two, up and do it. Jack! One, two, up and do Are it. Are you hurrying, dear? Another 35 and I'll be right down, hon. One, two. Young June, you gonna have breakfast with us, Miss Jackson? I think so, May. I hope he gets back from the doctors in time. Not sick again. Nothing serious, just his old trouble, his eyes. And what with this rainy weather, his sinus has been none too good. <laughs> oh, May, we'll have to get rid of those flowers. You know, Junior's hay fever. Seems to me like that boy's getting worse. Not at all. Junior's just had his share of bad luck. After all, he's only a baby. He'll outgrow it. I don't know. I've been in this house for 15 years. He's sure taking his time. We're not discussing Junior's physical condition. Now, let's check on those wheat cakes. Yes, sir. Jack, will you please hurry? Everything's getting cold. Coming, honey. Watch out below. <laughs> now, gotta be kiss me, husband. Just seems to catch my breath. Breath? That's not the girl I married. Since when does the former Olympic women's swimming champ get out of breath? As of now. Nah, I'm ashamed of you, Anna. I think you're getting old. You're not the girl I married. The girl you married wants you to sit down and eat your breakfast. The girl I married was the greatest swimmer to ever win in the Olympics. And that was the day that I proposed. Oh, you never change. The perennial college boy. Now sit down and let's forget sports. They belong in the scrapbooks and we sure have our share of them. All neatly bound. So as we grow older, we can sit before the fire and read them and quietly disintegrate together. I hate to grow old. Well, I must say you're, you're doing it rather gracefully. I've never seen you looking more attractive. Pretty good shape for a man of 41. Still could get out on that football field at Ridgeville U and make those youngsters watch their step. Oh, no, not Ridgeville U and football. They just haven't had a team up there in years, and The kids today just don't play guts football. Jack, Ridgeville is a small university. You can't expect them to beat a university like Southern California. You and I went to school, and I played quarterback. We beat Southern California. Oh, sit down, dear. Eat your breakfast. What a team we had that year. Oh, boy. Bronco Clayton. There was a fullback for you. Huh. And Dusty Hendrickson, an end. Dynamite. How do you want your eggs, dear? Big Butch Gorky. There never was a halfback like him. How do you want your eggs, Mr. Jackson? And Pudgy Dirk and lightning fast. We had a team that year. I'll tell you, there'll never be football like that again. How do you want your eggs? And in all due modesty, I must say, we'd have never beaten USC without jarring Jack Jackson. You know, they don't make you All-American on pull. Didn't get that name jarring Jack for nothing. <laughs> None of this fancy fancy dodging like the kids are doing today. You hunch yourself and you hit the line hard and you didn't go down because somebody grabbed you. You carried them with you, right? Right. How do you want your eggs? USC thought they had us. <laughs> you remember, hon? The score was six to nothing one minute ago, 20 yards, and they thought we'd pass. Jack, I asked you a question. Let me explain it to you, hon, so you see it for yourself. Here was a play. Here. You play Stubby Cochran's position. I don't want to play Stubby Cochran's position. He was a great center, Ann. Almost made All-American. Now, stay down there. Me? Yes, sir. You play in for USC. Excuse me, Mr. Jackson. I can't play in for USC. The beat cake will get cold. Yeah, maybe you're right. Play guard. Play with right off center. That's it. Stay down there, hon. All right, now watch it, May. I'm coming around your end. Oh, Mr. Jackson, what about the wheat cake? Jack, this is ridiculous. Stay down, hon. We only got a minute to go. All right? 44, ship. 33, ship. 22, ship. 21, hike. Hi, Are you hurt, son? No, sir. Put your hands up over your head. Take a few deep breaths. Come on. That's it. 
You'll be all right. Jack, stop You'll that. Right. Here, dear, let me help you. Where are your glasses? I don't know, Mother. They must be around here someplace. Oh. Well. I'll be all right. I'll just sit here at the piano for a while. Thanks, Dad. Dad, what, what were you doing? Oh, nothing. I was just... Your father was reliving his youth. Well, dear, you'd better go upstairs and, and freshen up for breakfast. All right, Mother. I'll be down in the jiffy. All right. Oh, Mother, Dad. Do you notice anything different about me? No, you look the same to me, son. No, what is it? Well, the lower half of the brace is off, and the other half comes off next week. That's wonderful, Junior. I think so, and I also have good news from Dr. Hunter. What? He says that the liver shots are working out better than he expected, and it'll only be a question of time. Bye. And. You know that I love Junior as well as any father ever loved a son. In fact, I've named him Junior after me. But how could this have happened to the two of us? How could what have happened? Let's face facts, Anne. Look at you, and look at me, and then look at Junior. Is there nothing to this doggone heredity business? But Jack, he's only a baby. A baby? He's graduating from high school. Yes, but he's just a child. A child? Is that any excuse for him to have hay fever in both winter and summer? To wear glasses since he was six years old? To have sinus trouble whether it's rainy or whether it isn't raining? For heaven's sakes, Ann, what's he going to be when he grows up? It's frightening. Jack, there's nothing wrong with Junior physically. Dr. Hunter says it's psychosomatic. Psychosomatic? What's that? Well, his ailments are brought on by mental and emotional disturbances. Well, who's disturbing him? You are. Me? Don't be ridiculous. You know there isn't a better father than I am. I've given that boy everything. When he was six years old, I built him a gym out in the garage. When he was ten years old, I gave him the finest professional football equipment. Oh, no, don't put the blame on me. He's half yours. Please, please Jack, he'll hear you. Well, I don't care if he, if he does. Well, let's eat our breakfast. May. May! Razor, do you mind? Razor? What for? Well, I I'll be I'll be shaving soon. I in fact, it's starting to come in on my upper lip now. See? Oh, uh, well, that's encouraging. Just be careful you don't cut yourself with it, that's all. Oh, I'll be careful, <clears throat> but if anything did happen, I always have my Boy Scout first aid kit with me at all times. I'm not an Eagle Scout for nothing, you know. <laughs> uh. Have some strawberries, son. Help yourself. Oh, I'll have to pass it up, Dad. Why? Build you up. Well, I... Jack, you know Junior's allergic to strawberries. He breaks out in a rash. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Well, that's all right, Dad, but I'm taking shots for it. Great. Well, what's next? Me! Jack, you don't have to bellow. Mm. Boy, those look good. That's great, honey. Thank you. That's it, son. I want you to eat every one of those. Put some syrup on there. 
Now dig in, boy. Make a man of you. Dad, I... Oh, you want butter? Sure. <coughs> and a boy. Dad, I can't eat these. Why not, boy? Jack, you just go on and eat and let Junior alone. What's the matter? Why can't you eat it, son? Well, Dad, I have too much sugar content in my system now, which Dr. Hunter says could ultimately lead to diabetes when I get older. And I'm taking shots for it. Shots? Say, these wheat picks are pretty good. By the way, where are the eggs? Me! You want them with the ham and the bacon? Leave off the bacon, May. I want to lose some weight. <clears throat> Just the ham and eggs. Yes, sir. What's the matter with you, boy? I'm waiting for my eggs, sir. An egg? What kind of a breakfast do you call that, anyway? You're graduating from high school. You have to go on to college and play football like any other boy. I'd expect to do that on one egg. That's my diet, sir. Jack, leave the boy alone. You're only making him nervous. He's making me nervous. I can't eat a thing. Now what are you doing? I'm preparing to take my pill, Dad, which will allow me to eat the egg. You want me to gain weight, don't you? Well, you just swallow it down with water. I can't take a pill that way, sir. I gag. Gag? You just take the pill, you put it on the back of your tongue, flush it down with water, and it's all over. I've tried that, sir, but I gag. That's ridiculous. You're not going to grow up to be a sissy. Jack, please. Will you stay out of this, Anne? After all, I'm not a villain. I have a perfect right to show my own son how to take a pill. Now, son, just relax. And leave everything to me. Have you got another pill there? Give it to me. Now, you take your glass of water in your right hand. Come on. Take your pill in your left. Stick out your tongue. Way out. Now, put the pill on the back of your tongue. Way back. That's it. Ah. Flush her down with water. Oh, for heaven's sake. Here, I'll help you. Give me another pill. All right, now open up. <coughs> Flush her down. Now, you got it? Good. Now, you see, son, it just takes a little guts and a little doing. Simple case of mind over matter, right? Now, Junior, I'm going upstairs to dress. But before I go to work, I want to have a little talk with you. See you in the den. Son, that's why I want to have this little talk. Now, just sit down and relax. Have one? Oh, no, thank you, sir. Go ahead. You're old enough. Yes, sir. Uh, I guess you're not ready yet. And don't call me sir. It sounds like I'm training you to be an English butler. This is just man talk, you and me, so relax, son. Now, what are your plans for college? Oh, well, Dad, I thought that I'd... You'd like to go to Ridgeville. That's natural. Your grandfather went there, built the stadium. Your mother went there, and I went there. I was a nine-letter man myself, so naturally you'll be there. Yes, the name Ridgeville and Jackson are one and the same thing. I know, Dad, but I thought I'd like to... You'd like to try for the team. You're a lucky boy, Junior. I can help you there. As it happens, Coach Wheeler is a very dear friend of mine. Matter of fact, I gave him a new gym last year, so I guess we won't have any trouble there. But, Dad, I thought, well, I'd like to join... Join a fraternity. Naturally, you'll be an A.L.K. man, just like your dad. Uh, uh, uh. 
I guess we won't have any trouble there. I gave the boys a new house last year. But, Dad... Yes, you'll have four grand years at Ridgeville, Junior, before you come out to the plant and take over in my place. You've got a good life, Junior. I, I wish I were your age, just starting out. Everything to look forward to. I'll well, be young again. You're a lucky boy, Junior. Dad, could I, could I say something? Certainly, son. Well, sir, I don't want you to think that I'm disrespectful or that I don't appreciate everything you're trying to do for me. It, well, I have an idea. You have an idea? Uh, yes, sir. I, I want to go to college, but I don't want to go to Ridgeville. Not go to Ridgeville? Well, there's nothing wrong with Ridgeville, sir. It's just that I became interested in animal husbandry, and there's a very wonderful school upstate, Northern California Aggie. It's a farm college, and they're very progressive. Northern California Aggie? A farm college? Well, yes, sir. It's an experimental school, and they're doing wonders with animals. For instance, the Dina men crossed a pig with a hybrid, and it's very interesting what came out. What? A very short pig. Uh, but the experiments aren't finished yet, Dad, and I thought I might even become a vet and work with animals, because they're very different than human beings. They, they can't tell you when they're in pain. They, they have no way of communicating with you. Therefore, one has to have more feelings for them than the ordinary doctor. Am I making you understand, Dad? You're making me ill. You standing there telling me that a son of mine, a Jackson, wants to go to some jerk agricultural college and study to be a horse doctor? You two boys ought to be ashamed of yourselves in here chatting when there's so much to do. Jack, the car is waiting, and Junior, it's your graduation day. Now come along, Jack. Jack. Uh, what is it? Remember, be home early. Junior's graduating tonight, and the ceremony start at 7.30. Don't worry, I'll be there with bells on. Cowbells. Jarring Jack Jackson's son. A horse doctor. Mother, what's wrong with Dad and me? We don't get along. Oh, you're just imagining things. Every boy has certain disagreements with his father. That's natural. All the time, is that natural? But, Junior, your father's heart is set on you going to Ridgeville. I know, Mother, but I can't follow in Dad's footsteps. His shoes are too big and I feel uncomfortable in them. You understand? Yes, I understand. Sometimes I think your father's the boy and you're the man. Now, come along. Everybody looking this way. Smile. Attention. That atmosphere is good. Quiet, everybody. I would now like to get a picture of the most popular boy, president of the student body Washington High School, and the greatest athlete who ever graduated, Bill Baker. <laughs> Mr. Jackson, here, yeah, that's my son, Bill. <laughs> that strapping, good-looking, healthy specimen belongs to you? <laughs> I want you to have a picture taken with Bob's Hunter, the most beautiful girl in our graduating class. Bob's, will you come up? Babs looks wonderful, Doc. You must be very proud of her. She's quite a girl. Quite a girl. Junior Jackson, will you come here a minute? No, not in the picture. I want you to hold the flashlight. Now. Hi, Dad. How do you feel? <laughs> Fine, my boy. Fine. Uh, Mr. Jackson, I want you to meet my son, Bill. Glad to meet you, young man. Nice to know you, sir. You got quite a boy there, Henry. You got quite a handshake. Oh, quite a boy. Quite a boy. <laughs> Here, Mr. Jackson, I know this isn't the time with the place, but I was wondering if you could see Bill tomorrow on a little personal matter. Of course, I'd be glad to. See the two of you at the plant tomorrow morning. Good luck to you, my boy. I wish you were. Heredity business is all cockeyed. Little Henry Baker. <laughs> 
Oh, come on, Jack. Let's have some punch. Hello, Mother. Hello, Jack. Hello, son. Oh, you look nice, son. Thank you. Doesn't he, Jack? Sure does. Oh, take it easy, Dad. I forgot him. So anyway, congratulations, son. Thank you, Dad. And thank you for the watch. See, Mother? To Junior, love, Dad. Oh, Jack, that's sweet. Congratulations, Junior. Oh, thank you, Dr. Hunter. I say, sir, would it be all right with you if I took Babs home tonight? Mm, certainly, Junior, certainly. Thank you. Dad, may I have the car? You see, I'd like a... <laughs> of course, son, you and Babs have a good time. Here are the keys. Don't stay out too late. Cuts down on your wind. I'll be home early, Dad. You sure you don't mind, sir? Why, not at all, Junior. Uh, where is Babs? I don't know, sir, but I'll find her. Little Henry Baker. Take it easy, girls. I'll get right as cramped. Oh, Bill, you haven't signed mine yet. You promised to sign mine, too. Don't forget, I have the second dance with you. And I have the third. And I have the fourth. Bill. Thanks. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, You're welcome. Bill. Could I have your autograph, too? Babs, you can have anything you want. You sure look pretty tonight. Thanks. You look pretty good yourself. Want to dance? I'd love to. Are you ready? Ready and waiting, sir. Well, okay. First, put your two knees close up tight. Then you sway them to the left and then you sway them to the right. Then Step around the floor kind of nice and light. Then you twist around, twist around with all of your might. Stretch your loving arms straight out in space. Do the eagle rock with style and grace. Swing your foot way around and bring it back. Now that's what I call a ball and a jack. First, put your two knees close up tight. Then you sway them to the left and then you sway them to the right. Step around the floor kind of nice and light. Then you twist around, twist around with all your might. Stretch your loving arms straight out in space. Do the eagle rock with style and grace. Swing your foot way around and bring it back. Now that's what I call a ball and a jack. First, yeah. your knees up tight, then sway them Dumb. to the left, to the right. Step around the floor, kind of nice and light. Then twist with all of your might, boy. Eagle Rock with the style and grace. 
swing your foot way around and bring it back. Now that's what we call ball and a jack. I can't understand it. Henry Baker to have a son like that. I hope Junior and Babs like each other. She's such a sweet girl. I think they'd be a nice couple. Little man to have such a big son. It just doesn't make sense. Jack, what are you mumbling about? Oh, nothing. It's amazing. It just doesn't seem fair. I'm sorry we didn't get to dance the last waltz together, Junior. I guess we missed each other. But I looked for you. Well, anyways, you're taking me home and I'm with you. You don't mind taking Bill home, do you? No, not at all. Thanks, Junior. This sure is a sweet car. You're a lucky guy. Put the radio on, will you, Junior? Yeah, sure. slowly through the park, huh, Junior? I'm in the mood for love Simply because you're near me Funny, but when you're near me I'm in the mood for love I stop to think of whether this little dream might fail. We put our hearts together. Now we are one. I'm not afraid if there's a cloud above. If it should rain, we'll let it. But for tonight, forget it, I'm in the mood for love. Oh, you sure are a lucky guy to have a girlfriend like that. Yep, lucky guy. Coach Wheeler, yes, send him right in. Yes, sir. John and Jack Jackson, put it there. Coach Wheeler, old son of a gun, glad to see you. What's the beef? No beef. I've got good news. Ridgefield's got a chance for the championship this year. On the level? Yep. Here's the layout. There's a great athlete in this town, Bill Baker, just graduated from Washington High School. His old man's a bookkeeper someplace. Underpaid, hasn't got a cent, Works for some rich, miserable guy, so this kid doesn't have the money to go to college. Oh, it's the old story, Jad. Coach, uh, I know this kid, Baker. His father works for me. He's my bookkeeper. Well, Jack, I, I didn't That's mean That's all right, Coach. Forget about it. What do you want me to do? Finance this kid through school. All right. I'll do it on one condition. When my son comes to Ridgeville, you've got to see that he makes the team and gets his letter. Well, Jack, be reasonable. Your kid's never played football. Besides, he's too light. So what? Could be another Sammy Barr, a great passer, or I'll be Booth, a great kicker. Well, it's possible, but there's no buts to it, Coach. I want my kid to earn his letter at Ridgeville more than anything in life. It's a package deal, Coach. If you want to take Bill Baker, you'll have to take my son. Yes or no? 
Well, I need this Baker boy like I need my right arm. I need your son, Junior, like I need a... Okay, it's a deal. So long. My son's here. <coughs> Can you see him now, Mr. Jackson? Yes, send him right in. Mr. Jackson? Hi, Bill. Sit down. What's on your mind? Well, I was talking with my dad, and he suggested I come on over here and ask you for a job in your plant. Well, aren't you planning to go to college? Well, I always wanted to, but frankly, we don't have the money. What would you do if someone offered you a chance to go to Ridgeville, all expenses paid? Faint? Well, don't faint, because I'm going to make you that offer. But why? Well, Bill, you know my son, Junior? Well, I spent a few hours with him last night, but I don't know him too well. Yeah, that's the point. Well, I want you to know him better, Bill. You see, he's a great kid, but he didn't turn out the way I want him to. Uh, I want him to be more, more like you. Well, maybe it's just a different type. Yeah, you're so right. That's why I thought that maybe if the two of you were roommates at Ridgeville, that you could sort of look after him. Maybe you could inspire him to be an athlete like yourself. You know, the strong, looking after the weak. But what does he say about all this? Doesn't know anything about it. And he must never know. Well, what do you say? Is it a deal? It's a deal, Mr. Jackson. But you know, with Junior, it's not going to be too easy. I only hope I have enough time left to play football. You're getting closer to Ridgeville, son. Yes? Oh, hello, dear. Feeling fine, fine, yes. Delighted to have him for dinner, certainly. Good old Ben Green, my old classmate, Phi Beta Kappa, smart as a whip. Yes, I'll be home early for dinner. All right, dear. All right. Let me get this straight, Ben. Aren't you a doctor? I'm a psychiatrist. What do you mean, dealing with crazy people? Oh, no, Dad. A psychiatrist is a man who helps people adjust to their environment and overcome inhibitions. Huh? Very good, son. That, in essence, is what we do. You'd be surprised how many people need help and don't know it. Well, I think it's all the bunk. Jack, please. Uh, that's all right. Jack hasn't defended me. A lot of people share his viewpoint. They don't know they need help. I was on a very interesting case in Chicago about a month ago. A typical case of a dominating father trying to run his son's life. Result, typical son. Shy, introverted, psychosomatic symptoms, flash of personalities, tragedy. What happened? Well, in this case, the father committed suicide. He jumped out of a second-story window. That's very interesting, Dr. Green. Do you know of any similar cases? Well, there was another case of a father and son. Yes, well, I don't approve of this kind of conversation in front of children. Junior, why don't you go upstairs now and get a good night's rest? Kiss your mother good night. But, Dad... You heard what I said, son. Kiss your mother good night. Shake hands with Dr. Green here, and upstairs you go. Right, son? Good night, Mother. Good night, son. Good night, Dad. Good night, sir. Good night. Good night. Would you know where I could get any books on this subject, Dr. Green? Fine. Oh. Good night. An only child? Yes, he's our only child. Mm hmm. Very interesting. Well, if, if you'll excuse me, I have some things to do. Jack, I don't want to get too personal, but I think you have a problem with your son. Let me help you. You know, a lot of people pay me fancy prices for this. You can get it free. Thanks, Ben. There is a problem, and there shouldn't be, because no one could be a better father than I am to that boy. Ben, he's going to step right into a big business. It's all set up for him. I had it all planned for him to go to Ridgeville. I had it all arranged for him to have the best room in the paternity house. I even had it fixed for him to get his letter. What do I get for it? He resents it. How did you know? Say, Ben, what is happening with this younger generation? They're ungrateful. Jack, you don't understand. He's not the problem. You are. Me? 
Why, there isn't a better father than I am, Ben. That boy's had the best. Well, let's not get into all that. You've done nothing for that boy. You've done it all for yourself. You're selfish, Jack. Selfish? I only want my son to be a leader. Maybe he's not a leader. Well, he's got to be. Jack, you're trying to run your son's life, and it won't work. He's not like you. And if you keep it up, you're going to run into a much worse problem than whether or not he wants to go to Ridgeville. It can become much worse. Well, what'll I do, Ben? Well, why don't you go up and visit with Ann? Let me talk to Junior a few minutes. Maybe I can help. Junior, will you come down here a minute? I'm getting ready for bed. Well, forget about it and come on down here. Uh, son? All right, Dad. Now, remember, I want that boy to go to Ridgeville. Dr. Green here would like to have a little talk with you. You wanted to see me, sir? Yes, Junior. Just like to have a little chat with you. Well, is it all right with you? Oh, yes, yes. Let's go on in the den where we can be more comfortable. Oh, if you don't mind, sir, could we talk someplace else? You see... You don't have to explain. I understand. Would the patio be better? I think so. Fine. You don't like the den, Junior. Why? Oh, it's a nice room. It's my father's favorite. But it's his room. You understand. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Of course. Anyway, it's a nice night, so let's just make ourselves comfortable and have a pleasant chat. Hmm? <clears throat> Junior, I'd like to ask you a few questions. You don't mind, do you? Oh, no, sir. I like talking to you, Dr. Green. Good. Well, now that you've graduated from high school, what would you like to do? Well, will it be confidential just between the two of us? Confidential. Well, sir, I'd like to go to Ridgeville, and I'd like to play football, but I never will. Why not? Because of my dad. Well, don't get me wrong, sir. I love him, and I respect him. And I'd like to do everything he did, but I never will, because I couldn't do it as good. I'm scared. Well, how do you know you couldn't do it as good? Well, no one is as good as my dad, sir. Just ask him. He does everything the best. That's why I do everything the worst. I got what you call complexes. And I don't mean to be disrespectful, sir, but I'm frustrated. Have you ever told your dad what you would like to do? Oh, no, sir. You can't tell him anything. He tells you. Why don't you try to meet your dad halfway? Talk it out with him. Try and show him your side of it. You take the initiative. You know, older people are more set to their ways. I think you owe it to your dad and yourself to try to become better acquainted with him. I'll try, Dr. Green. Fine. You can go to bed now, Junior, if you like. Thank you, sir. Good night, sir. Good night. Ben, what's wrong with him? Nothing, Jack. He's a fine boy. I think someday you're going to be proud of him. I would suggest, however, that you try to see more of him alone. You get to know him better. Well, I'd like to, Ben, but it seems like every time we're together, we fight. I think the boy resents me. It's, it's unnatural. On the contrary, Jack, it's the most natural thing in the world for children to resent their parents based on the fact that from the time they're born, parents represent authority, interfere with their will. So the average normal child often resents his parents. Some children wish they had different parents, some children even hate their parents. What about Junior? Think he hates me? Hates you? The only advice I can give is never take your boy hunting. Son, 
I think we ought to become better acquainted. Don't you? I think so. A father and a son ought to be, well, close, more like buddies. Don't you think so? I think so. Tomorrow's Sunday. Why don't we spend the whole day together? Just you and I, alone, you know, like, like pals. I'd like that, Dad. Good. What would you like to do, son? Anything you'd like to do, Dad. Well, no, no, it's your day now. What would you like to do? Anything you'd like to do, Dad. Now, I'm asking you. What would you like to do, son? Well, I have a splendid idea, Dad. Something I think we'll both enjoy. Oh, what is it? Would you take me hunting? That's what you really want to do, son. Careful with that gun. It may be loaded. No, it isn't, Dad. See? <laughs> Dad? You know, an accident can happen. Would it be a terrible thing if you shot your own father? Yeah. <laughs> what are you grinning about? I'm so happy. I'm having such a good time, Dad. I think we'll find some game over there now, son. Why don't you go in front of me? I want you to have the first shot. Uh, uh, no, Dad. You go in front of me. No, son. Now, you go in front of me. I'll cover your ear. No, Dad, I'll be in back of you. You first. You'd like that, can have a little nip. I'd rather that you have it with me, with my permission. Son, here's to you and Ridgeville. this all about? Just a little evening between father and son. Perfectly normal. Perfectly normal. You've both been drinking. Drinking? Right it's ridiculous. Just a little celebration of Junior deciding to go to Ridgeville. Right, son? <laughs> right. <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. What are you trying to do? Grow up to be a rabbit? No, these are my Dr. Denton pajamas in case I get a chill. Well, I guess you and I are going to be roommates. Huh? Why? I don't know why. They just assigned me to room 24. Oh. What's the matter? Do you expect to bunk alone? No, no. I was just wondering why the two of us are roommates. That's all. Just wondering. 
I don't know why. They just put us together, I guess. Okay? Yeah, okay. Mind if I have a drawer? Oh, no, no. I didn't know. I'll get them out. Would you like the top drawer or the bottom drawer? Makes no difference to me. 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 Will one drawer be enough? One is plenty. More shirts? Oh, no, these are my medications. Oh, are you planning to become a doctor? Oh, no, you see, I haven't been too well. You want the upper shelf or the lower shelf of the medicine chest? Either one, I'm not too much. The lower one is easy to get to. Makes no difference. Makes no difference to me. If you ever have sinus, this stuff will clear it up in a minute. Just two drops in each nostril and you'll breathe again. <coughs> <coughs> of course, a little will trickle down your throat, but I have a pill for that which clears it up. Well, I wouldn't have any use for that. I'm pretty healthy. Oh, that's nice. You want to sleep in the upper or the lower? Makes no difference. Makes no difference to me. Well, it makes no difference to me. You're going to make up your mind and you're going to drive me nuts. You don't have to get huffy. I'll take the lower. Fine. Okay. I better go back to the lower. Why? I'm getting a nosebleed up here. It's too high. Okay. Any way you want. Good night, Junior. Aren't you going to open a window? Why, you warm? You got to sleep with the window open. You want to be healthy, don't you? I do. I mean, I do. I'll get it. I said open it. What are you doing? Oh, nothing. You closing the window? No. Don't you believe me? I believe you, but open it. Yeah, I hope we'll become friends and like rooming together. You know, roommates and pals. Bill, are you asleep?
Coach, that Baker kid's great. Look at that punt. 70 yards. Yeah, he's all right. We've got a good chance, boys. I've never seen a better football player since Jar and Jack Jackson played for Ridgeville. We got a break when they changed the freshman ruling. All right, you guys. Over on the dummy. Come on, move. On the double. Coach Wheeler? Yes? I'm ready to report, sir. Who are you going to report and for what? Me. I'm ready to play football. Look, I'll save you a broken neck. The ping pong team needs an anchor man. But, sir... Look, you're too light for football. Sorry. Yeah, but you wrote me a letter and it said Junior Jackson to report. What did you say your name was? Junior Jackson. Oh. Oh, yes. Junior Jackson. I didn't recognize you. Must you wear glasses? Oh, no, sir. Only when I want to see. Well, okay. Get in with the rest of the boys. We're hitting the dummy. Yes, sir. Nice one. Junior, you're hurt? No, I'm all right. I must have stumbled. Here, let me help you. I don't need any help. I'm all right. Kid's like his old man. He's got guts. But as far as being a football player, there the resemblance ends. Grass drill. Running in place. Ready? Begin. Bring those knees up. On your stomach. On your back. On your stomach. On your feet. On your right side. Left side. On your feet. On your back. Right side. On your feet. Come on, bring those knees up. Hold it. All right. All the backs on the chinning bar. Linemen around the goal post and into the showers. Need any help? No, I can make it. When? The football season will be over. <clears throat> Bill? Yeah? Is this good for me? Well, of course. How come I'm getting nauseous? Up on the table, please. I'll take these. Oh, I can't see without them. You'd be better off. Straighten out that spine. <laughs> now, just relax, boy. Just relax. Better? Yeah, but what happened to the head? Uh, Junior. Junior. I'm in here. What are you doing? Nothing. I'm just sitting here. Why? Why? Where can I go? The whole body's broken. So I'm just sitting here. But I ain't got nerve enough to put my head under the water. Well, where's it hurt? Where does it hurt? Where doesn't it hurt? It's easier. Well, I know just a thing for you. I'll go down to the drugstore and get something to fix you up in a minute. What is it? What you need is a good rub down. I'll go get some alcohol. Oh, no. Come in. Baker, first year at school. Wear shirt size, 15 and a half, 40 regular in jacket, hate ties, like soft white shirts, and have much money. What, what are you, a walking department store? No, let me introduce myself, my card. Terry Howard, college representative of Nasty Noma Brand. By your convenience, don't come see me, I'll see you. Save half by seeing Terry Howard first. What are you selling? I have here some of the finest cashmere you've ever seen. Just feel that material, crush it in your hands. Once a girl gets a load of the cashmere in a jacket like that, she'll never let you alone. Let me show you my whole line of sports clothes. Well, I have to go down You here. haven't seen the new Argyles that just came in. Socks to match your eyes, every color, every description. And the luscious maroon sweater I have to go with those dark, wavy locks. Well, a salesman with sex appeal, huh? Strictly business. This is the way I work my way through college. Now, what can I give you? I don't think you have in that sample case. 
Just a minute. Let's stick to business, huh? I know when I'm outmatched. I can't afford any new clothes. I'll see you around. Bill! Bill! Junior Jackson. Size 9 shoe, 10 and a half sock, and 13 and a half shoe. I'm dying. I'm dying. Are you Junior Jackson? Yeah. Are you decent? I've always tried to live a clean life. No, I mean, are you in the bathtub? Yeah, I'm taking a bubble bath. I'm Terry Howard, college representative of some of the finest manufacturers in the country. For new customers, we have an introductory offer. These nylon swimming trunks, absolutely no cost on your part. Here, put them on. Although I haven't seen you, I know you're the type that would like a dark cashmere suit, very suitable for evening wear in place of a tuxedo. Can I come in? Yeah. Gee, a girl sales lady. What kind of college is this, Master? Oh, no, Beth. We have a much better product, Pink Tonic. It's cheaper and makes the bubbles last longer. Please, miss, if you don't mind. Let me show you these wonderful cashmere jackets. As you can see, this one has a belt in the back and is very sporty. And this dark blue is very suitable for evening wear in place of a tuxedo. Oh, yes, of course, this one is English made. You have the shoulders for it, I noticed. Please, lady, forget the clothes. I just want to get my body back. There's no obligation on your part, so let me finish. Of course, it's hard to tell what you would wear. I haven't much to go on, you know. Look, miss. You can call me Terry. You're Junior Jackson. How do you know? Oh, I have a line on every new student who comes here to school. You do this for a gag? Not at all. You see, it's the only way I can get my education. Some girls are waitresses. I'm a sales girl. I prefer it. Anyway, it helps me in my psychology training. You see, I'm a psychology major. Gee, I wish I had your spirit. I'm glad to meet a girl like you. Oh. Oh, just happened to have a thing for you. This striped robe marked down from 45 to 22. Well, it just so happens I need a robe. But you'll have to leave the room. See the house, girl. Hi. 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 How come I haven't seen you around lately? Football season. What's the matter? Don't you ever relax? Sometimes. Well, why don't you try it some night? Say tonight, for instance. I'm not doing anything. Now, look, Terry. I know you're about as good looking as they come on this campus. But I also know there are three things that'll stop a guy from playing football. That's being with a dame, going with a dame, and liking a dame. So I'll see you around. Size 10. One dozen silk ties. Nine tennis sneakers. Size. Three socks, size eight and a half. One dozen argyle, size nine and a half. One dozen V-neck sweaters. Uh, formerly eight dollars on sale for nine. Formerly eight dollars on sale for nine? Price of living's gone up all over. <laughs> Junior, you've been a great help to me. I can't thank you enough. Terry, will you tell me something? What? How does someone become like you? Don't try. I'd rather be rich like you. No, I mean, you have so much confidence in yourself. It's all a matter of ego, Junior. That's what psychology teaches you. Ego? Sure. You see, Junior, you've got to believe in yourself. You've got to keep saying over and over to yourself, I'm big, I'm big. Now say it. I'm big. No, 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 Junior. Believe it. Out, out. Throw your chest out. It's difficult for me. I'm skinny. Well, spiritually, then. Put your shoulders back. Walk up and down. Be cocky. Say, I'm big. I'm big. You hear me? I'm, I'm big. I'm big. I'm big. You hear me? I'm big. Well, it's a start in the right direction. And that's what you've got to believe. And I'll help you. You'll sort of be my guinea pig in my psychology experiments. Guinea pig? Come in. Who is it? It's me, Junior. Well, come on in. I can't. Help me. Well, why can't I? What is this? Christmas is months away. What are you doing? I just had a date with Terry. You better stop seeing that date. We won't have any room to sleep here. Oh, no, Bill. She's wonderful and so good for my ego. The least I could do is buy some things. Look at this dressing jacket I bought. It can also be used for grouse hunting. You know, it's reversible. Of course, you have to live in England for it, but it's practical. Mm, of course. Where's the monocle? Oh, she didn't have any in stock. 
But she's ordering it. It's due next week. Grant. Bill. What? I'll tell you a secret. Go ahead. I think I'm stuck on Terry. I'd have never guessed it. Oh, yeah, she's the first girl I ever had that took a personal interest in me. She certainly took a personal interest in you, all right. Would you do me a favor? Well, it all depends. Did you ever hear Cyrano de Bergerac? Cyrano de Bergerac? Didn't he play in for Cornell? No. He was a character in a very famous play. And he had a big nose and he was very ugly. And he sent his best friend to talk for him to the girl he loved because he was very self-conscious about his nose. So? So I'm in worse shape than Cyrano. I'm self-conscious about all of me. So I thought if you could go over and see Terry and tell her how I feel about her. Why me? Well, because you have an easy way with the women. And you're a big football hero. Would you do that for me, Bill? You just got it. Why must I just got it? Look at all this stuff. I'm running out of money. Come in. Oh, hi, Bill. Hi. What can I do for you? You need some shirts? Always selling, aren't you? Well, a gal's got to live. Well, you sure are living. I just brought over a check for the stuff you sold Junior. When are you going to stop selling him clothes? Well, he needed clothes badly. And I see you did all right for yourself, too. I always say a man can't have too many clothes. What do you always say? I always say I think the kid's stuck on you. You're kidding. Well, who else but a guy in love would buy 15 pair of shoes in one week and all of them tennis sneakers? I'm interested in Junior as a psychological study. He's sort of snooky, you know. Yeah, but he's a great guy. You'd be lucky to get somebody like him. What do you mean? The trouble with you dames is you have no vision. Most of you go for a big, husky, broad-shouldered, good-looking football hero type. So? Someday Junior's gonna be like that. Bill? Yes? How long do you think it'll take him? It'll take him quite a while. To be like you? Yes. Well, why should I wait then? Dear folks, it seems hard to realize that a month has gone by since I left home. I like Ridgeville pretty much. I'm rooming with a swell fellow, Bill Baker, who is in our graduating class. He's been very nice to me. Ought to be. Hmm. What'd you say, dear? Nothing. Go on. Uh, I also like a girl named Terry Howard. She's very unusual and has a forceful personality. I think Dad will like her. I thought he liked Doc Hunter's girl, Babs. Well, kids that age are fickle. Besides, she's here and he's at college. Well, let's forget about his love life. Go on with the more important things. Tell Dad that, much to my surprise, I'm still on the football squad. I can't understand it, because try as I might, I'm not improving fast enough. The coach doesn't like me or dislike me. He just seems nervous when I'm around. But I hardly think he'll let me in the first game, so there's no reason for you and Dad to come up. I'm sorry. I'm doing the best I can. Love, Junior. I, I miss the boy. Well, you'll get a chance to see him this weekend when we go up for the game. Oh, but it says he doesn't think he'll get in the game. Yeah. Well, darn Jack Jackson's son will be in that first game. I can promise you that. Me! Oh, me!
Junior, I want to talk to you. But gee, Dad, I better get out there. It's only take a minute, Junior. You can make this the happiest day in my life if you'll just get out there and really play football. I don't even know if I'll get in the game, Dad. Don't worry, I have a feeling that you will. Well, I hope so. I better get out there. Wait a minute, Junior. You know, you're not going to just run out on the field like the rest of the players. You're going to make an entrance. What do you mean, sir? Well, you see this old number 66? <laughs> That's your dad's old jersey. When I quit playing football 20 years ago, they retired that number and nobody has worn it until now. You're going to put this on and really make an entrance of this jersey, son. The people out on the field are going to see another Jackson coming out wearing old number 66 to play for good old Ridgeville. How do you feel, son? Isn't it a little large, Dad? Well, tuck it in. Remember, live up to old number 66. Old, jarring Jack Jackson's number. Now, go to it, boy. Sport fans, this is Tom Harmon speaking to you from the stadium where today we'll bring you the game between Ridgeville and Thornton University. The ball game today, of course, is the opening of the season and it promises to be a whale of a football game. The captains return to their teams and are now getting their final instructions from the coach. There they go to line up for the kickoff. Jones will kick off for Thornton. Yes, that's right. And back in the receiving position for Ridgeville is Tom Edwards and Bill Baker, Ridgeville's All-American candidate. Jones signals, the ball clubs get ready. He approaches the ball, it's a long end over end kick going way downfield, it's going to bigger. He takes it on the seven yard line, he's at the 10, the 20, picks up some nice blocks, he's at the 35. They are two tackers, but he's going to go all the way. He's on the three yard line, and rolls into the end zone for a touchdown. It certainly seems apparent that this Baker boy continues to spark the Ridgeville team as he has done today all season. The playoff for the Rose Bowl will be between Ridgeville and that great University of California team. You see that run, Jack? You couldn't have done it better. Very good, very good. When are you going to send Junior in? The teams are lining up for the extra point now. Smith will hold and Baker will kick. Get set. One, two, three. There's the pass in center. talk about football, but I certainly would like to make a prediction here. This Ridgeville club certainly looks like the greatest team that they've had in 20 years. And why? Simply because of one man, Bill Baker. That boy's an All-American if I've ever seen one. All right, Coach, how about Junior? Okay, Jackson, get in. Me? Wait a minute, there's a substitution. They're taking Baker out of the ball game. I certainly don't blame him. There's no sense in risking an injury with that boy at this time. The substitute for Bill Baker is number 66. Number 66? Let's try uh, K97 on two. Uh, that's a pleasant play. We might enjoy ourselves with that one. Unless you'd rather have uh, K97 on four. That's a little more strenuous, but we might get through with it. <laughs> No, we better do K97 on two. On two. Break. We're out of the huddle now. Oh, oh, fellas, I have a better idea. I'm sorry. We come back? No, they're back in the huddle again. Take it easy, coach. Take it easy. The boy will come through. You'll have to excuse us, but this is private. Jackson's apparently having a little trouble with his signal. My heavens, you're nosy. Come on. Delay that game. Ridgeville's penalized five yards for delaying the game. It's now third down, 20 yards to go. Ridgeville's ball on Thornton's 47-yard line. Take it easy, coach. Take it easy, coach. The boy will come through. Red flanker left, spread flanker right, BG opposite, two lead swing, 36 AO on four. On four, break. Ridgeville comes out of the huddle. They go into an unusual spread formation. No blockers. One, two, three, Jackson four, back. five. Ball is snap. Jackson has it, he's smothered back on his own 45 yard line. Big pile up down on the 
Field. I believe, yes, they did. Horton recovered the fumble. Ladies and gentlemen, so far in this ball game, young Jackson has not been anything like his father, believe me. But then two Thorntons had their troubles. They're now going to have to go into punt formation and kick. It's Phillips back in punt formation. There's the snap from center. He gets off a long spiral kick that comes down the field. Jackson waits for it on the 20-yard line. He's caught it. He's off. There he goes. 25, the 30, the 35. He's in midfield. Still on his feet. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Jackson is running the wrong way. He's back to the point of 40. The 30. The 10. The 5. He's going down on the 5 yard line and fumbles and Horton recovers for a touchdown. Listen to that crowd boom. Get in there and take that, that, that tenth place. Well, folks, they're taking Junior Jackson out of the ball game and putting Bill Baker back in. Believe me, ladies and gentlemen, Junior Jackson is nothing like his father. He'll win ball games, perhaps, but I'm afraid for the other team. This has been the worst day of my life. How could my own son do this to me? It's not all Junior's fault. And you see before you the mere shell of a man. A man who has devoted his entire life to his child. Look what happens. He makes a touchdown for the other team. Is there no justice? Oh, don't be so dramatic. It's only a football game. Only a football game? Out there in front of all of my old classmates? in front of 20,000 students, the son of jarring Jack Jackson disgraces himself. Is there anything worse? Yes, he could have been a criminal. Well, that wouldn't have been so bad. But at least we could have sent him away and no one would know. Jack, I'm not going to stand here and have you berate Junior. He probably feels bad enough. Ann, are you sure he's our son? Oh, stop it, Jack. He was born at home. Oh, yeah, that's right. I haven't even got the satisfaction of thinking they might have switched him on us in the hospital. Junior Jackson, what are you doing in this empty stadium at night without your coat on? You'll catch your death of cold. I'm sorry, Mother. Junior, I'm worried about you. Do you still want to play football? I like it, but I guess I'll never get a chance now. The coach will drop me from the squad. Gee, today I disgraced everybody. Son, listen to me. You were at a disadvantage. It isn't the easiest thing in the world to be the son of a great athlete. A prominent father's the biggest drawback a boy can have. Don't I know? So from now on, your father will not dominate you. You'll be left alone to make your own decisions. I'll see to that. You're going to stop playing football, but take up your regular studies, and you're going to shower and have dinner immediately. But I don't want to... From now on, you have nothing to worry about. You can make up your own mind. You're a man. Come along, son. Yes, ma'am. Bill. Mr. Jackson wants to talk to you. Be seeing you, Jack. And thanks. Sit down, Bill. Played a great game this afternoon, boy. You reminded me a little of me. Thank you. Of course, you can't pass like me or run like me. You don't hit the line like I used to. But you reminded me a little of me. Well, there'll never be another you, sir. Thank you, son. Bill, you remember the proposition I made you? Mm-hmm. Coach Wheeler is dropping Junior from the squad. But our deal is still on. Mr. Jackson, you don't understand. I like living with Junior. We're getting to be great friends. You don't have to pretend. But I'm not pretending. I understand, Bill. You're loyal. You're just trying to make it easier for me. Your father should be a very happy man. I know that I would be. And Bill, you'll still get my check every month. You've lived up to your part of the bargain. Well, that's very generous of you, sir, but... Well, thank you. Coach, 
Yes, Bill? I was just talking to Mr. Jackson. You can't drop Junior. Why not? Didn't he say it was okay? Well, it might be okay with him, but it's not okay with me. You gotta give him another chance. Now, wait a minute. Either Junior plays or I don't play. But you don't have well, to. That's the way I want it. Now, what do you say? Getting tougher to be a coach every day. Okay. But you better be good next Saturday. Because with your method, you've got to have a lot of talent. Don't worry. I got it. Tell you, tell you I'm through double-crossing Junior. Now, take it easy, Bill. Don't tell me to take it easy. You talked me out of it once before. I'm through being a heel. I'm going to tell him. But it's so bad for his ego. Never mind his ego. It's more honest this way. Okay. But I'll handle it. I want to break it to him gently. I don't want to shatter his confidence in himself. When are you going to tell him? Next time I see him. Good. It's the only fair thing to do. Terry, can I come in a minute? Where am I going to hide? I don't want him to find me here. Quick, in the closet. You be sure you tell him. Leave everything to me. I just came over to say goodbye. I'm leaving school. Leaving school? Why? I ran out of reasons. Today on the football field, I disgraced my father and the team. Now I'm being dominated by my mother, and she's almost as bad as my father. I shouldn't have come to Ridgeville in the first place. Oh, sit down, Junior. Let's talk this out. There's nothing to talk about. I'm a failure. Oh, don't get excited, Junior. Something will turn up to give you your confidence back. No, I'm a failure. The only reason Bill lived with me is because he felt sorry for me, and you try to help because you're a nice person. Besides, I'm a good customer. No, I'm leaving school. Oh, but Junior, if you leave school, I'll feel very bad. You will? Yes. I like you for yourself. You do? Well, sure. And I think if you stick it out, you'll be able to prove to your father and to everybody that you're a man. Well, I could do it, Terry, if... If... Yes? If I had a girl like you behind me. I mean, if I thought that you thought I was somebody. Well, I do think you are. You know, Terry, I've been stuck on you since the first day you sold me the robe when I was in the bubble bath. Well, I liked you too, Junior, but I've got to tell you about Bill and me. Oh, no, we can talk about Bill some other time. If you wear my fraternity pin, I won't leave school. Well, how will that help? Well, it'll give me a reason to stay. It'll be a little victory. And it'll restore my confidence. That's what you said I needed. Just wear it a little while and see if you like it. Well, okay. But on one condition, that you won't leave school. Oh, no, I won't. I'm a new man. I'm a tiger. I'm big. You're wearing my fraternity pin. I'm big. Well, you certainly told him. What did you expect me to do with everybody browbeating you? He needed someone to turn to, and this was no time to sell him more shirts. Well, what about you and me? We'll have to wait. I'll have to be Junior's girl until he builds up his confidence in himself. But you love me. Of course. This is just for Junior. Okay, just for Junior. I can't go on with this. Sure you can, Junior. It's all for you. Yeah, Junior, it's all for you. Come on, once more. Crouch, crouch. I told you a million times, use your body, your knees. I can't go on with this. Sure you can, Junior. It's all for you. Yeah, Junior, it's all for you. Come on, we'll try once more. Set. One, two, three, four, five. Oh. 
Junior, you're developing into a great kicker. Yeah, and I'm getting more confidence, too. Maybe I'll get in a homecoming game. Sure you will. Now, don't you feel better? Oh, sure. And I owe it all to you, too. My best friends. And I'll always be grateful to you for this. That's okay. It's all for you, Junior. for being with us all the way. Got to break up now because I want the boys to get a good night's sleep. Yay, Chief! Yay, Chief! Yay! Hey, Bill, the coach told me I might get in the game tomorrow for a few seconds. That's great. And I owe it all to you. I'll never be able to tell you how grateful I am. Forget it, we're pals. Well, that's why I want you to be the first to know. Know what? Well, after the game tomorrow, I'm throwing a little party. I'm gonna introduce Terry to my folks. And if they like one another, well, you never can tell, Bill. You might be my best man. You mean... That... Yeah, aren't you happy about the idea? Yeah, I think it's real great. I'm only sorry I can't be with you. But I have a party of my own to go to. Hey, Bill. Who is it? It's me, your boyfriend. Bill, what are you doing here? It's after hours. Just come up to congratulate the bride. Hope you and Junior... What are you be... talking about? Bill, you've been drinking and it's the night before the game. So, uh, besides drunk or sober, I know when I'm being double-crossed. What's come over you? You ought to know. You planned it that way. Me, Bill Baker, big All-American. Big All-American sucker. I don't understand. You wouldn't understand. First, I let his old man buy me through college. Then I let my own girlfriend talk me into playing second fiddle. All for Junior. I thought we agreed it was for his ego. Well, what about my ego? Everything for Junior's ego. I'm getting tired of it, and I come up to tell you I'm tired. Shh, someone will hear you. Don't shush me. I'm tired playing games. What's going on with you two? I'm glad you asked that question, madam. That's what I come up to find out. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been one of Ridgeville's saddest homecoming games. Without Bill Baker, they put up a good fight, but Wilton is winning seven to nothing. There's only five minutes left to play. Ridgeville has called timeout. Son, I never should have let you room with a boy like that. I got not talk about him. One chance in a million for a championship, and that kid's got to get loaded. Why did he do it? Why did he pick last night? Coach, you gonna let Junior in? Please, Dad. Oh, yeah. Son? Maybe some of living with Baker rubbed off on you. Loosen up. Junior, 
I got to talk to you about Bill. Forget it, Terry. I thought he was my friend. He is your friend. That's why he's in this trouble. He wanted to tell you long ago about your father's money and that we loved each other, but I wouldn't let him because we were trying to build up your ego. And building you up, he thought I double-crossed him. That's why he came to my room drunk to tell me off and got himself expelled. And it's all your fault. What can I do to make it up? There's only one thing to do. Stop being self-centered and dependent on other people. Get out there and stand on your own two legs. You have reason to have confidence now. Bill helped you, now get out there and help Bill. Okay, Terry, I'll try. All right, Jackson, there's two minutes left. Get in there. Coach, I'd like to ask you something. Did Bill keep me on his squad? I, I'd like to ask you a favor. What is it? Could I wear Bill's jersey? Fred, got 32's jersey? Yeah, here it is. Okay, hurry it up. Junior Jackson is wearing Bill Baker's number 32. Junior Jackson is going into the ball game for Ridgeville. K24 on three. On three, great. Ridgeville's ball on Wilton's 20 yard line. Set. One, two, three. The ball is snapped. He starts to circle his left end. No, wait a minute. He's running back towards his own goal. Junior is running the wrong way. No, wait a minute. He's reversing his field. He picks up his blockers. He's back to the 40, the 30. The 20, the 10, the 5. Junior Jackson scores a touchdown for Ridgeville. is now 7-6 with Wilton leading. Jackson covered almost 90 yards on that touchdown run. Ryan. Well, now it'll be Ridgeville's turn to try for this all-important extra point. It'll be Ryan who will attempt the extra point for Ridgeville. Well, Coach, I could have made the extra point. Son, you've been seeing too many college movies where the hero goes in at the last minute and wins the game. The touchdown you made was a miracle. Thanks. Sit down. There's a snap from center. He puts the ball down. There's the kick. It's no good. So Wilton leads by a score of seven to six. With but one minute left to play. That missed kick may have been the ball game. Redsville lining up for the kickoff now. They'll kick off to Wilton. There's the kick. A long end over end kick coming down the field. Martin takes it in the end zone. He's going to run it out. He's back to the five, the 10, the 15, the 23. He's hit at the 23 and goes down and he fumbles. And I believe Richville recovered. Yes, they did. So the first time, 10 yards to go for Richville. Five seconds left to play in the ball game. Now we'll see whether or not Richville can capitalize on this break. Richville has called for a timeout. Coach, I tell you, you got to put Junior in. He's a great kicker. I've been practicing with him day after day. Mr. Jackson, I tell you he'll come through. Junior, it's a tough spot. He'll be kicking from the 29-yard line. Stiff wind blowing. What do you say? I'll do the best I can, Coach. Okay, it's crazy, but go in. And good luck. Coach Wheeler's making a substitution. He's taking Ryan out and putting young Jackson in. Apparently, Redwell is going to try a field goal from an almost impossible angle. Great. I wonder what's going through young Jackson's mind now. You can do it, Junior. You're big now. Do it for Bill. Remember all the hours we practiced? Take your time. You can do it. And there's the kick. It's up, up, up. It's over for a field goal. Jackson on their shoulders and carry him off the field. Well, what a football game that boy has played today. Well, Terry, all misunderstandings cleared away. You happy? Very happy. I am too. Well, there's Bill. Let's go tell him the news. Bill, we've got some news for you. Congratulations, but it's not news anymore. Oh, you don't understand. Will you dance with Terry? She wants it that way. Right, Terry? 
baseball. I don't. Please, Bill. And, and I want it that way. She's for you. Okay, pal? Okay, pal. Junior. Hiya, Bed. I've been looking all over for you. You know, I can't tell you how thrilled I was this afternoon. Why, you're just the best football player that ever was in the whole wide world. I guess I was just lucky. Lucky? Why, you just thrilled me. You know, I've always liked you ever since high school. Yeah, you did? Of course. Couldn't you tell? Well, I... Well, you'll be able to tell from now on, sugar. What have you got for your little baths? Close your eyes. Pucker up your lips. Bye. Dad, see, I won my letter. That's nice, son, but where are your glasses? Oh, my glasses? Well, since I won the game this afternoon and I'm a hero, I don't need them anymore. Doc Hunter was right. It was psychosomatic. But, Dad, aren't you pleased about the letter? Son, you taught me there are more important things in life than football. Will you please autograph my program? Mine, too. Certainly, youngsters. Happy to do it. Who's Certainly. talking to you? We mean him. Yeah, who does that old geezer think he is? That old geezer is my dad, Jarring Jack Jackson, the greatest football player ever turned out at Ridgeville. So what? We saw you this afternoon, and for our money, you're the greatest. I'm going out for football next season, Junior. Could you give me some advice? Well, there were three things when I played football. You hit them low, you hit them fast, and you hit them hard. And if they get up, you hit them again. Yes, sir, you got to play gut football. Thanks, Junior. Yeah, thanks a lot, Junior. Okay. I'm sorry, Dad. That's all right, son. That's my boy. Mm -hmm. 